So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ahmaduhu wa usalli ala Rasulil Kareem, amma ba'd fa'audhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Innahum fityatun amanu bi rabbihim wa zidnahum huda, wa rabatna ala qulubihim idh qamu faqalu rabbuna rabbus samawati wal ard, lan nadwa min dunihi aliha, laqad qulna idhan shatata. رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي امين يا رب الحمد لله today after some time i'm making my online presence and so the today the subject i want to talk about is what did the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam teach us in regards to how to react primarily to the fitna of Dajjal. And to this, I want to first start with the specifics from the narrations of the Prophet ﷺ, which I'll be sharing with you, and then to the universals that are mentioned in Quran. And then some maybe extra points alongside that. <coughs> so, Bismillah, let us begin with the first point. The Prophet ﷺ, in a long description of the hadith of uh, Fatima bin Tuqais, of the hadith of Tamim al darmi the Prophet said ﷺ, uh, about him, he, the Prophet said, in the Arabic, uh, the Jal said, أَيُعْذِنَ uh, لِي فِي خُرُوج I will be given permission to leave khuruj. Now this word khuruj is very interesting in the Arabic language and has to do with many of the ahadiths that relate to the end of times and is a proper language of the end of times. أَيُؤْذِنَ لِي فِي خُرُوج فَأَخْرَجَ فَأَسِيرَ فِي الْأَرْضِ So I will come out and travel the earth. فَلَا أَدْعَى قَرْيَةً إِلَّا أَحْبَطْ أَحْبَطْتُهَا فِي أَرْبَعِينَ لَيْلَةً There will be no qariya. Now keep this in mind. There will be no qariya. There will be no qariya. There will be no qariya. There are three words in Arabic language that mean city. Balad, qariya, and Medina. Qariya is a city that is amongst some of its qualities, when you look at the word Qariya in the Qur'an, one of its qualities is a town or a city that is disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Mecca is Ummul Qura in the Qur'an, the mother of the cities. And Jerusalem is called Qariya also. So the, he, uh, the, uh, So it is narrated, فَأَسِيرَ uh, الْأَرْضِ I will travel the earth فَلَا أَدْعَى قَرِيَةٍ I will not leave any qariya. Now let me uh, mention something that will help us understand this narration. Qariya is a place in which there are people living. One quality is that it's disobedient to Allah, a place disobedient to Allah. إِن مِّن قَرِيَةٍ نَحْنُ مُحْلِكُهَا For example, or kam ahlakna min qaryatin, how many of qaryas we have destroyed. The second word used in the Quran is balad. Balad means a land, any land that is what? That is properly organized. For example, uh, any land or space of land that it may be positive, may be negative, okay? Uh, any land that is or has been once properly organized. By this balad, meaning Mecca, that is a place of security. Another word used in Quran for land, a type of piece of land is Misr, which is a large land that is organized. So like technically when we say Misr, everybody thinks of Egypt because the word Masr is used in Quran for Egypt, but actually it could be any nation state type of situation. Okay, and so uh, Qarya is a city level situation, Balad is a land, an area, a large land or area that is city or cities. Okay, Qarya is a city, 
And the other word is Medina. Medina is a very positive word used in Quran. Also, these two words are contrasted Qariya and Medina and Sutil Kahf when Musa met Khidr. Okay, so Qariya, Balad, Medina, Masr. Four words in Arabic language that mean a type of town or place. So he says, There will be no Qariya, no disobedient place except I will go there. A organized group of people running a city that is in disobedience to Allah, except I will go there. Which will be the whole world, as you will see, will become clear. But this is what Dajjal says about what he plans to do. And there will be two qariyas, two qariyas, two organized places, he will not be allowed to enter. One is Umm al Qura, the mother of the cities. He will not be allowed to enter Mecca. And he will not be allowed to enter Medina. So Dijal is not allowed to enter Mecca. He's not allowed to enter Medina. So meaning Mecca and Medina will be Qariya. Will be cities at that time in disobedience to Allah. And this is confirmed in the sayings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where the Prophet said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Medina will become like Yathrib as many times we have talked about that hadith. Okay? And Mecca will be in shambles and in disobedience to Allah. Look at Mecca today. It's already in disobedience. So think about the future. So, he is going to travel the earth, okay, in 40 nights. Now, this is the most important word. Ad'a. I will not stay. فَلَا أَدْعَى قَرْيَةٍ إِلَّا إِحْبِطُوهَا Okay. He said, so I will get out and travel the earth. Okay. And I will not spare any town where I would not stay. أَدْعَى قَرْيَةٍ إِلَّا أَحْبَتَ أَحْبَتُهَا Except I come down to it. So any place that is a city that is inhabited by a group of people in which there are sins happening or some disobedience happening or just any city except I will come down to it. Okay. So now that we have clarified this, now let us clarify the next point. So, Qariya, Balad, Masr, and Medina. What did the Prophet tell us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what to do when you hear about the Jal, Imran bin Hussein, radiyallahu an, he says, "Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam man samia bid the Jal, whoever hears of the Jal, meaning when you hear of his coming, right? Falayna uh, anhu, then turn away from him, flee from him, go in the other way." So where will he come? He will come to every city. So the Prophet said, leave the city. Maybe not 100% clear yet, right? Well, we're coming there, inshallah. مَنْ سَمِيَ بِالدِّجَّالِ فَلَّيْنَ عَنْهُ فَوَاللَّهِ إِنَّ رَجُلُ يَأْتِهِ وَهُوَ يَحْتَسِبْ أَنَّ هُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ So there will be one person, he will consider himself a mu'min, and he will go to Dijjal. And the muhaddisin, they've said different things about this, which I will share with you. But he will have shubba, is what the scholars, they said. In rajalan ya'tihi wa huwa yahsibu annahu mu'minun fa yattabi'hu mimma yab'athu bihi min al-shuhbat. And so he will come to him regarding his, uh, he, and he will, instead, he will begin to what? Follow him because of his doubts. So the Dajjal will be able to put doubts even in a person who thinks he's a mu'min. And what did the Prophet tell us? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Turn away from the Dajjal. Flee from him. Where will he go? He will go to the Qariyas. He will go to every Qariya on earth. Okay? The Prophet said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the people will flee from Dajjal such that they will go to the mountains. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
لا يفر الناس من الدجال حتى يلحقوا بالجبال the people will flee from the jal and where will they go they will go to the mountains and at that time okay um sharik she when she heard this she said an interesting question qalat um 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 sharik ya rasulullah fa ayna al arab yawma idhin where will the arabs be Where will the believers be? Where will the Arabs be? Hum qalil. The Prophet, there will be very few of them because already before the Dajjal comes, there would have been, before he comes, a great war in which up to two-thirds of humanity will be lost. And so when two-thirds of the humanity is lost, whatever is reserved or whatever is protected of that progenies of Islam then they are the ones that are going to carry the torch on and where will they go they will go to the mountains and the prophet told us this in many narrations of his but i'm only sufficing with this particular na- narration in jamia tirmizi okay the prophet says they will flee from the jal and go to the mountains and let me over here share with you these are the specifics but let me give you the universal What does Surah Al-Kahf in the first 10 ayat tell us? That when you are being forced to do wrong, you have to leave the city and go to the cave. And where are these big caves? They're in the mountains. Meaning you have to find shelter in a mountain. And so a cave would be a good idea to look for. And so people will do this on their own or they will do this in groups it's better to do it in groups and it's better to be organized so that when that great war comes you're already out of the city because as the prophet said sallallahu alaihi wasallam there will be very few arabs very few people left after these great wars and if you're in the cities you're going to be in trouble you're going to be in deep trouble i don't have time to go into those narrations today but i have done so in my previous videos Let us continue. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ad-Dajjal are you? Ad-Dajjal a'war. Dajjal is a'war. He has one eye. Okay, ainun yusar. He is blind from the left eye. Okay, wa jufa ushar, and he has a lot of hair. Okay, ma'ahu jannah wa nar." And he'll have heaven and hell. So he'll go to these cities that are in shambles, that are in desperation, and he'll fix them up and bring back technology. After the war, he'll bring back the Jannah. And, Allah, and the Prophet told us, don't take that Jannah, go to the fire. Go to the fire, meaning go to the mountains. That's the difficult. Go to the opposite of where he's going. He's going to make Jannah on earth. In this, these cities, every city he's going to go to. He's, and there, there are other narrations that talk about this. But today, my only point I want to emphasize and make clear is that the Prophet told us, when Dajjal comes, you better be going the opposite direction. Which is not the cities, because that's where he's coming. He's coming to every ma- major city. He's coming to your city. Oh, Muslims, he's coming to your city. Dajjal coming to your city. Don't let that happen while your eyes are wide open. Okay? Be prepared to leave. Now, let me uh, share with you some of the, uh, what the muhaddisin have said about this narration uh, and what the great scholars of the past have said. Uh, من سمي بالدجال أي بخروجه وظهوره في زمان في زمانه. Whoever hears of Dajjal when he comes out, and when he comes out in his time when he's supposed to come out. فل فل ينا عنه to turn away from him. أي يعبد وال يع وال يغب عنه. Ya'bad, meaning go far away from him and disappear from his sight. Wal fal ya'ib anhu 
okay? ولا يعتمد في ملاقاته and don't make intention to meet him. له على ما به من الإيمان. Don't think you have enough iman that you can go meet him and for والله إن رجل لا يعطيه وهو يحسب أنه مؤمن فيتبعه مما مما يبعث به من الإيمان. ربما أن يسعه إلا أن يتبع الدجال. لما خدع يستخدع and when Dijal will deceive him he'll think he has Iman and Dijal will deceive him uh, and so on and so forth he will deceive him so be far away from him and the people will go to the mountains so all Muslims go to the mountains are you ready to go to the mountains? We better be making preparations to go to the mountains. Then the Prophet said, وسلم, How fast will he move through the earth? He said, Like a rain cloud driving by the wind. He said, He will come to some people, call them, and they will respond and believe in him. And he will command the sky to rain, and it will rain. That is his Jannah. And he will command the earth to produce vegetation, and it will do so. And their flocks will come back in the evening with their humps taller, their udders fuller, their flanks fatter than they had ever been. Then he will come to some other people and call them, and they will reject him. So they will turn away from them, and they will suffer drought, and they will be left with nothing. Then he will pass through the wasteland and say, Bring forth your treasures. So he will pass through places and bring back technology, bring back the resources, bring back the, the, the earth back to what it used to be before the Great War, when after which the Arabs would be left few, especially after the Circus 19 preparation that is being done. Okay, I don't have time to go into that right now. My point here is that y you have to be prepared to leave dunya in dunya and make preparations to leave the cities. And what is the universal of this in the Quran? The universal of this in the Quran is the idea of hijrah. When you're in a place and you're being oppressed, like the Muslims were being oppressed in Mecca, you make hijrah. When Musa والسلام, he had his people, they were being oppressed, what did they do? They made hijrah. When your iman is being oppressed, you have to make hijrah. What did the Ashabul Kahf do? They made hijrah. So you will have to make hijrah. You will have to go to the mountains. And the Prophet said, وسلم, eat from the root of the mountains, either be with the jama'ah, and if you don't find the jama'ah, then just be alone in the mountain and eat from the roots. If you don't know, if you don't, if you go to the mountain, you don't know what to do, eat from the root of the tree till you die. Okay, so over here, I wanted to establish one point today and make that clear that you have to leave the cities for many reasons. One is when Dajjal comes, he's going to test your Iman in the city by making the cities beautiful and full of what it used to be. Because before he comes, it'll be desolate places. Okay? And then after he comes, he'll make it great. And people that reject him, right, they'll have nothing. Right? And he's going to give you heaven and hell. And he'll tell you, either you're with me or you go out and you can't have the treasures that I have. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in mentioning this in the surah before Surah Al-Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says very clearly, Allah says, إِم مِّن قَرِيَةٍ إِلَّا نَحْنُ مُحْلِكُوهَا There will be no qariya, again qariya, Oh, and I forgot to show you the hadith about the word balad. Oh, I have to do that. Okay, so let's do this ayah first. وَإِن مِّن قَرِيَةٍ إِلَّا نَحْنُ مُحْلِكُوهَا And there will be no qariya, which is where the jal will go to every qariya, إِلَّا نَحْنُ مُحْلِكُوهَا He will go to those, except we will destroy it. قَبْلَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Except we will destroy it before the Day of Judgment. So be, and events will occur before the Day of Judgment where all the big cities and all the cities will be destroyed. Or we will punish it with a great 
punishment. وكان ذلك في الكتاب مصطورة. That makes me shiver. And that is already written in a book. It's going to happen. Your city, my city, is going to be in deep trouble. Unless we find a way out. So either you go out before the great wars and you can protect Islam through your progeny. Or you can stay in the city and suffer the consequences. Or when after all the destruction is done, then the Dajjal will come, you'll have to leave the city. So there will be two major reasons to leave the city. In Surah Al-Isra, it gives the reason of the Malhama, actually. And in Surah Al-Kahf, it gives the reason of the Dajjal. And these are the two surahs, one after the other. I don't have time to go into the relationship between these two surahs. So in Min Qariyatin, there will be no Qariyat except we will destroy it before the Day of Judgment. So there's going to be a destruction of all these cities around the world. Or we will severely punish it. And this is already written. My city and your city is already in trouble. Muslim city, it can be Islamabad or it could be uh, Washington DC. We are in trouble. So the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Laysa min baladin, like Makkah, a land. Okay. There will be no land that is organized. لَيْسَ مِنْ بَلَدٍ إِلَّا سَيَتَعُوهُ دجال إِلَّا مَكَّةَ وَمَدِينَةَ There will be no balad. Okay? Balad is an interesting word. Like I said, هَذَا الْبَلَدِ الْأَمِينَ There will be no land that has, uh, you can say, civilization in it, except Dajjal will come to it. And in another narration, the Prophet said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam." Except, illa he will come. To, obviously, he's going to come to where the people are, right? And the people that accept him are going to come to where he goes, which is the cities. And the people that are in the cities will be given heaven. And the people that are outside and going to the mountains, they will be not given that garden that he will claim to have. And the Prophet said, "Living outside will actually be jannah, and living inside." Inside the city where he will show you these treasures, that will actually be the hellfire. And so if you die because you were living in the mountains and you couldn't survive, you'll be in Jannah. In another narration, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لَيْسَ مِنْ بَلَدٍ عَلَىٰ سَيَطِيعُهُ هُ الدِّجَّالِ إِلَّا مَكَّةَ وَمَدِينَةَ There will be no land he will, that he will not come to or he will, that will not be stepped by him. Okay? By Dajjal, but Makkah and Medina. There will be no balad, no place where a group of people, a large group of people are living. So balad is used for relatively, Qariya could be like a smaller, also a village, for example. Okay, But balad is not a village. Balad is large area. Okay, So that's the point I'm trying to make here, where there is civilization, where there is different interaction of human beings. The Dajjal will come to these places primarily. Where will the believers go? They will make hijrah to the mountains. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepare us to <coughs> make our hijrah plans.